Good morning, and welcome to another edition of In the Spotlight with Commissioner Jeffrey Mims. And this morning, I have my guest, uh, Mr. John Rogers. Uh, Mr. Rogers, who is the coordinator for the Dayton Public Schools Males of Color program. Uh, Mr. Rogers, good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Good morning. Glad to be here. Good, Glad to be here. good, good. So uh, what brings you to the um, uh, city of Dayton's offices this morning? Well, this time of year again, uh, you know, uh, the beginning of school is uh, August 12th, so we're gearing up for another year, and uh, we've just gone through a restructure uh, for the Office of Males of Color. So uh, doing that and uh, gearing up and, and preparing for our, our youth summit uh, this year as well, uh, which will be our kickoff uh, for the community and for the youth to get them uh, more information about the program and also uh, give them an understanding of the uh, tools that we're using to try to improve students' uh, academic performance and uh, supporting their social emotional health. Okay, all right. So you say a little bit of a restructure. Um, can you give us a little, a little bit more detail? The biggest part of we've the, been kicking right, off for right. about what this is probably what our fifth or sixth year. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, well, well, fourth. Well, to be the fourth, it feels like the fifth. <laughs> uh, but um, we are uh, in the process of, of shifting programming. Okay. Uh, we tried a lot of things over the years, but what we found is that we need to shift more to, toward after school. Uh, so we are part of the restructure is our uh, coaches will be working with students midday to evening, uh, whether it's social emotional uh, wellness. Uh, we're also focusing on restorative practices, restorative passages, rites of passage, uh, and manhood development. So all of these things will be a lot easier to have happen if we move from uh, basically a, a day for a coach would be uh, going in around 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. getting prepared, uh, having lunch and learn with students uh, from lunchtime until about 1.30. Lunch and learn would be brief uh, seminar sessions on a, a variety of different topics. Also giving them an opportunity to check in, make sure our folks are in attendance, address any issues that they might be having in the classroom. Uh, and then there's a break in there where my, my coaches and, or slash facilitators will uh, work to uh, perfect their lesson plans so we'll be ready for the afternoon. And the afternoon will include all kind of things, you know, whether it's uh, athletics, opportunities for athletics, open gym, to sit in our uh, uh, classes and have the students pr participate in uh, the restorative circles, which are really mm -hmm. important uh, because these are things that help students manage conflict, help them deal with particular situations that they may have in their lives. Uh, the plan is to also have study tables uh, immediately, okay. the first hour when school is out. We want to focus mm -hmm. on the academic piece uh, okay. because you look at, you know, if I think about when I was in school, you know, imagine adding five or six more hours toward uh, a student's academics when they might not have done any of that for, for the entire week. Because sometimes yep. we go a long time without cracking books open. So that certainly will improve their academics, but also the restorative pieces that we're putting in place to address some of the challenges that these students mm -hmm. have. Because we know that uh, when you address those areas, uh, academics just improves <laughs> as a byproduct because yeah. we're addressing all of those other issues. And, and you know, you know I'm just listening to you, just uh, again, as a long time educator myself, and you look at data and research, uh, it validates everything that you just said. Yeah. Yeah, and right. in terms of when those young people are involved and engaged in multi-faceted uh, areas right. of, of achievement, right. then it gets to be so, somewhat contagious. Yeah, so exactly. if you're good at being in the band, if right. you're good in, in science class or, or whatever the case may be, those things continue to um, reinforce each other and they spill over into other Absolutely. things that you do as well. Absolutely. So, so again, uh, that's, that's great of course. And, I also understand too that we're still looking with that new structure that we still have the external ambassador piece, mm -hmm. if we will, right. with the groups of men that we have from the fraternities and mm -hmm. other walks of life right. who are still in position to continue their support Absolutely. of coming in, maybe during lunchtime or other scheduled times right. that they have right. with, uh, with the principals and with the students. Well, and that'll be the benefit because, you know, there are, we've got a lot of committed men in the city. Uh, and one of these, one of the reasons for the change is to make it easier for them to be able to come out. Right. So now it's not doing the work day. And you know, we did have a lot of participation, mornings, midday, but that some of the feedback I got, which is, you know, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be willing to do whatever you need, if, but I don't, I don't have the availability because right. I don't get off work until five. Right. Well, now this year, our day will be basically from about 11 to seven. 
and that means we can make all of those things happen. Mm -hmm. um, we can also, uh, it'd be easier to communicate programming that's going on in the evenings. It'll be easier to uh, give them an idea with the syllabus and the curriculum that we have what's going on. Because what I want to do is create traffic where, you know, if you realize that tonight we're talking about financial literacy, for, for instance, for a topic, and those uh, men in the community. Which is very critical. For those men of, in the community mm -hmm. that, that uh, want to participate, they see it on the calendar. And they say, hey, this is my this is my home school. I can go out to this event and help mm -hmm. with the facilitation, mm -hmm. answer questions, and just and just be there. Just just be there uh, for the young people to uh, communicate. And and you know the biggest part is commissioner is working in some fun. Yeah. These are young people. Yeah. You know, we we've got to work in some social uh, events and some programming that will uh, not only help them, but also will be enjoyable and fun for them. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we get, you can get very academic with the things that we yeah. do and best practices and all these things. But we also want to add that. I want males of color to not only program with just the 25 to 30 students in our group, but also be um, be there to program for the entire building mm -hmm. you know, in, a, in a number of, of yeah. different topics that we're covering. Well, you, you mentioned fun. And um, I know a lot of times when I've talked with um, educators, mm -hmm. principals, teachers, you know, board members, all up the spectrum, and then especially students, um, the joy of teaching and the joy of learning seems to have uh, dissipated to, to a degree. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say primarily because of testing, but it's been a major uh, cause for right. some of those things to happen right. uh, because people are so so amped up, mm -hmm. they're feeling so so pressurized in trying to make sure that those scores right. are going in the direction that they want them to go. Mm -hmm. the, um, the challenge that we have when you look at other high achieving school districts that fun is, is woven into the fabric of the, of of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And they see, as we were mentioning earlier, how those things are connected and how they support each other. Right. And so when we were talking about some of the kinds of um, uh, discussions in terms of how you measure and how you categorize uh, different elements of um, things that create conditions for success, mm -hmm. uh, when we were out with uh, President Obama in Oakland, he talked about the three A's. And those three A's, of course, yeah, right. uh, were uh, attendance. Right. That means you bring you behind the school every day. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> attitude. You have your attitude right, so you right. can learn. And then, of course, uh, the first two A's equal the third A, which is achievement. Achievement. And that right. achievement is in every field of human endeavor. Right. So, right. whether it's, you know, again, uh, math class mm -hmm. or or your. Uh, um, you know, science or, or English or whatever the case may be. The same thing, you would take it to your right. basketball court, your soccer field, your know, golf course, mm -hmm. one of my favorite activities. Right. So you take those things and you weave them together. Right, so, that's right. So and, it, and you know, and in a way we're just, we're kind of supplementing some of those things. Um, right. You know, I, I want people to, to uh, understand that, you know, being a African-American male can be fun. Yeah, you know, yeah. There, I've <laughs> there's, had fun. You're, yeah, you're right. There life. are there not, are not without some challenges. Yeah, though, but I've yeah. had some fun. But it's it's <laughs> not it's not the the uh, it's not always a sad story that people think it is. Right. You know, our our students just need support, and they need to be people need to remember that these are young people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even even with the study tables, I plan to make sure we have candy mm -hmm. and different things like that, just to keep that vibe going. That this is not. It's serious yeah. because we're trying to save students' lives. We're trying to really undergird mm -hmm. them to make sure that their futures are, are positive. But at the same time, we have to create activities that make, that give a student a reason to come to school. Yeah. You know, you know and, talk, and basketball talk, was my reason. Okay. You know. talk, talk about one of those things. You were saying something like candy. Um, I know we use pizza. Pizza, pizza about, parties. Yeah. Talk about that event. Uh, I know that we participated in right. over at Wow School with right. um, Board President Harris. Right. And um, I think we had a couple of ministers as well. Right, right. Who um, went over to the school with us. And we spent, what, two and a half hours? Yeah, almost, yeah, almost yeah. three hours. With yeah. um, right. uh, about 12 young men mm -hmm. who had previously been... Uh, miniature social deviants, right, okay? right, right, and, and they were changing their attitude, and right. part of their reward in terms of that progress that they were making mm -hmm. was for us to have that uh, movie pizza day, right, right. And well, and you talk know, about that in terms that of was, some of the things that 
And we happened. had a lot. We had a lot of fun that day. Right. Uh, it was interesting. You know, using films are very engaging for young people. And and what I do is I, when I when young people watch films, I treat it like literature in a way because, uh, we we stopped the film in different sections. Right. And I was really amazed at how they were picking up the storyline. Yeah. They knew exactly what was going on with the little boy, mm -hmm. uh, and they really enjoyed that. And you, we had a lot of good dialogue throughout those stops in the yes. film. So it can still be an educational tool, but at the same time, uh, you know, we had a good time. We had pizza and punch, and they really appreciated it. Right. And it was, it was something that, uh, if I recall, we didn't have an issue with one young man no. that day. No. Matter of fact, one, I don't know if you remember, one was there and he just came in and because he was having some behavior issues having that day. Issues and, and he ended up participating brought as well. Right. Well, it's things yeah. like that where we can, we can teach students in some cases without them even knowing it. Yeah. And that is, those are the tools that I like to use, whether it's, it's music, whether it's arts, whether it's sports. Um, you know, if we, if we have open gym with the guys, it's not just going to be us going in there and doing open gym. I, don't, I, rem I remember you talking about uh, correlating and, and there are ways of teaching them. For, for instance, we practice free throws. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things that are involved with that. Consistency, stance, uh, frame, uh, uh, you know, there's a numbers game to it. There's a lot mm -hmm. of different things that mm -hmm. you can use. So we have to find very inventive ways with young people to teach them. And media is everything. Because if, if you can't get them locked in, certainly media helps a lot. So we've prob yeah. I've probably got another 14 films that we're going to utilize this, this year, Males of Color film festivals and mm -hmm. uh, you know I'd like to do it just for groups or for within buildings so mm -hmm. students can sit and think critically about film and understand what foreshadowing shadowing is and understanding themes and all of these different things that happen within a movie because that works down to when you're sitting and reading you know if you don't if you don't keep reading you don't know the outcome of what you're reading it's right. a lot it's it's the same with film you know, you hear people talk and say, well, what's going to happen next? Well, you have to watch it unfold mm -hmm. and you have to listen and pay attention and look at warnings and things like that. So it's just really finding new and inventive ways and a lot of old ways that we know yep. that engage young people. So school can be a drag. I recall it was for me, but it's about one or two things that make you want to persist because you know if you persist, you can get some of the other rewards and the, mm -hmm. some of those social rewards mm -hmm. that come from, from doing well in school and, and, and being focused and being involved. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited about yeah. the change because I, think, I, I think, think it's gonna work. Yeah, being able to apply that, um, those, those concepts in a movie mm -hmm. uh, to some of the real life situations. Real life situations, and, yeah. And I know that um, I had two major pleasures, I mean a bunch of pleasures, but uh, one of the major pleasures I had, I go back to being able to watch Boys in the Hood with right. my son mm -hmm. when that movie first came out. Right. You know, decades right. ago. Right, right. A lot of lessons. And, and, and then uh, a couple of years ago, we were able to, we were both in, uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, father-son trip. Yeah. And uh, we went to see um, uh, Black Panther. Okay. Together. Right, right. You know, right. So, right. I mean, Same it's just thing. those kinds of things that you see and think about the different lessons and, and things that you get mm -hmm. uh, from, from watching, like you said, the storylines, et cetera. Uh, we got something else going on. Mm -hmm. You know, we got a lot of things going on, Absolutely. but the one particular big event that we have coming up is the um, Males of Color Youth Summit. Youth Summit, right. Okay. Right. And uh, this year it's in partnership with the Black Cultural Festival. Right. You know, I know uh, our conversations with uh, Marlon Shaka Ford. And first of all, I want to thank the members of that board. Uh, and those members uh, for the Dayton Cultural Festival mm -hmm. uh, Board, uh, Marlon Shackford, Cheryl Kane Scroggins, uh, Ashley Bass, Janice Williams Spearman, Judge Wilcox, uh, Wilcoxon, mm -hmm. and um, of course, um, Mama Renee McClendon, uh, Annette McGee Wright, Claude Yaya Febro, uh, Nipple Glenn, uh, Amaha Selassie, people mm -hmm. already, everybody knows him. Right, absolutely. And of course, Tommy Owens. Right. Now, I hope I didn't uh, beat up anybody's name too bad, <laughs> but you know, we all know those individuals because they're in, involved in Very so many active. different things that are happening in this community. Right. And they're part of this board. Right. And the African American Cultural Festival is one of the longest serving events that addresses just so many people mm -hmm. in our region. 
that come to that, you know, not just African Americans, but people of all races who right. come to that particular event. And it's a cultural festival, which is something that is a great family event. Mm -hmm. And um, you have African dancing, you have art, you have uh, vendors who are there Ooh, with yeah. their particular wares as mm -hmm. well. And this year, we're partnering with uh, that particular event and the Mills of Commerce um, uh, Summit mm -hmm. that we're going to have on August 17th, August 17th which is going to be right. that Saturday. Mm -hmm. So the Cultural Festival is going to be going on both the uh, Saturday and Sunday, 17th and 18th. And we have a very strong connection with the Mills of Color Summit, which is going to be 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. On the 17th right. mm -hmm. at Sinclair? Right, Sinclair okay. Building Okay, talk 12. about that for, for a bit and some of the speakers, some of the programs. This is our third annual uh, summit, okay. and uh, we coordinated this year to put the full focus on the youth. You know, we've tried a lot of things in the past. So we've got... Uh, you even uh, have a youth summit, right? I mean, youth forum? We have a youth yeah. forum that's going to be really good because there's a, there's um, uh, uh, Chaz, what's Chaz's last name? Uh, Amos. Chaz Amos is going to do uh, a presentation about his right. uh, interaction with President Obama when you yes. guys went to, went to Oakland. Okay. Uh, really looking forward to that. And you know, something that's come out of and the kid we just took to Los Angeles right, uh, right. last week, right. uh, Mr. Uh, Thompson, uh, right. Marcellus Thompson, Marcellus Thompson, uh, right. football player at um, at uh, Dunbar. At Dunbar, right. Yeah. Had an awesome time. Spoke really Ac highly. Academic genius. Highly of the event. <laughs> well. I mean, he, yeah, he, he totally blew me away. Uh, and I think, you know, the fact that we added the panel discussion, the youth panel discussion, I think is really powerful because they talked about the youth panel discussion that took place in Los Angeles that you guys right. just came back to. And I think it's gonna be an awesome piece for people to hear from them. Yes. I'm gonna sit mm -hmm. back yep. and let them talk and let them talk about their experiences and, and you know, the impacts that uh, they're having and the impacts that folks have had on them, I think it's just really important. But we're gonna, you know, we're gonna uh, have a, a quite a few things going on that day. Uh, uh, Dr. Kevin Washington, is going to be here again. Mm -hmm. He was here our yep. first year. Excellent, right. excellent presenter, scholar, African American psychologist. Like they did a show with him. Yes, yeah, yeah actually, yep. And right. that's, I've got that on the Facebook link too, uh, the show that we did last year. But he's going to do a piece on understanding the African American male learning and experience. Uh, we've got Donnell Tenner, who's going to be here, uh, and he works with curriculums that address the uh, particular needs and focus of African-American and Latino students. Uh, he's also an ex-WNBA uh, coach. Mm -hmm. um, he's also worked as a, a law enforcement officer. Many a number of things. He's written about eight books on learning okay. and uh, closing the achievement gap and uh, community focus and those things that uh, really help communities get involved with changing the trajectory for not just male students, but all mm -hmm. students. Uh, and then we've got uh, 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 student restoration and restorative arts. We've got boys to men, rites of passage presentation. Um, there's a, uh, uh, you're gonna do the BFAM, Brother from Another Mother, mm -hmm. Community Mentor Leadership Development, mm -hmm. because we're continuing to move toward involving the whole community in getting right. involved. And mm -hmm. we've got some events coming up this year that I think are gonna be really good. And once again, now that we've moved to after school, that opens up the whole city. Yeah. That, gives us, that gives us access to a lot of people because a lot can happen between the hours of three and seven o'clock. So I'm really excited about that mm -hmm. because it gives folks that, that ability to come out. Uh, we're we're uh, looking at, uh, um, it's, there's a presentation called Under the Athletic Influence with Mark Baker and a number mm -hmm. of other uh, ex-professional athletes talking about balance and, right. and, and managing athletics and achievement, but also being an ambassador for your school and for your city mm -hmm. and, and for your culture. Uh, higher learning, uh, supporting the transition of African-American males in higher education. We have again, again have uh, Sinclair and Brother to Brother coming out, Mark DeWitt and uh, Chris Welch, and Desha Deshana Yamini. Uh, that's gonna be an excellent session. I'm doing hip hop psychology uh, survivalists turned in consumers using hip hop in the classroom to mm -hmm. improve achievement. And that mm -hmm. is an examination of the current culture and uh, some of the positive and negative nuances that uh, make the music. We have to contend with what the young people right. are listening. We can't listen ignore it. Right. So I, I think it's important that we can use a lot of it in a positive way to get them and help them learn and get them under, to understand, but also think critically about their own situations. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've got from three to 345, 
uh, just m me and uh, uh, Brother Tenor just got together. We're going to offer a special session for teachers at the very end of the day. Okay. And so any teachers that might <clears throat> want to come out also, they'll, they'll, they'll have the opportunity uh, to, to come and, and hear from him and just get some different perspectives. And it'll be a continuation of some of the other professional development that I plan to do mm -hmm. with teachers and, and staff uh, this year. So looking forward to uh, this year. Uh, certainly with the new focus, we've already got a lot of registrations coming in, mm -hmm. um, and I'll be promoting <laughs> yep. from now until uh, that Friday night before the actual mm -hmm. event, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's an opportunity for the entire community to come out, for teachers, for faculty, for staff, for administrators, anyone within the community that wants to get in a better an idea about what we're doing, what approaches we're using, and how they can continue to be involved for the rest of the school year. Okay. Now, you're also serving lunch, breakfast? We're serving breakfast and breakfast, lunch. Breakfast. Yes, oh, yes, breakfast and lunch. Yes, okay. breakfast and lunch. So and that, we've, that, got that's, a, that's a great we've got a new sponsor this year. Uh, R.A. Cook's mm -hmm. Renovations is also our corporate sponsor this year. And they'll be providing door, door prizes and some other things as well, which is okay. going to be very helpful. Okay. So I'm glad to, glad to have them on board. Key Bank will be back also, City of Dayton, NBK. So really, really looking forward to all of it. Mm -hmm. You know, and... Um, of course, one of the things that you mentioned generally, the um, uh, community piece with the Jack and Jill Botillion. Absolutely. Okay. Right, right, uh, right. Which is um, actually in Ohio the longest serving uh, organization that has mentored black males. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yes, um, I'm thinking probably 53 years okay. that they've been in existence in yes, terms sir. of uh, that particular function. Awesome. So it'd be another opportunity for people to come as well who are interested in maybe getting their uh, son mm -hmm. uh, registered for that program Absolutely. to um, uh, to be in a position to perform, which I think it's going to be April or March of next year. Mm -hmm. But we'll start practicing generally around January okay. or February. Okay. But it'll be just a good opportunity to see some of those young men who have been in the program in the past yeah. Yeah. Uh, do a little performance and also to talk to them That's and right. let them tell you about what they what they have felt and what they gained through that process. And I attended the battalion a couple of years back, so yep. I was really impressed. That's yep. why I, I said it'd be a good, really great idea to yep. have yep. them come to the summit. Mm -hmm. And these are peers. Mm -hmm. These are former graduates of DPS. These are current students. These are young men that are, are, are still doing a lot of great things uh, in the community and personally. So a bunch of them. I think, yes. I think all of that, and like I say, I was, I was impressed with all mm -hmm. of it. You, mm -hmm. You're still handling business, too. Yeah. <laughs> we, we do the best we can. Yep, yep. Yeah. The, um, I'm not sure how much more time we have, um, and, uh, but I just want to make sure we cover everything that needs to be covered. The, um, the aspect of um, being able to look at the value, again, that this brings to the community. Absolutely. Because when you start talking again um, about black male achievement and mm -hmm. people under, okay, why is that important? Right. What's, what's the, what are the circumstances around that? Right. And, and how can you measure the success? Right. Um, and then the question that I always ask a lot of people, okay, what do you want to measure mm -hmm. or how do you identify right. and define success? Right, absolutely. And, and that's always a challenge. It is, it um, is. Which is one of the reasons why when we look at those three A's, mm -hmm. if you break down the three A's, like we said, the um, attendance, the attitude, and the achievement, what are some of the elements, if you will, that you think would go into process from each one of those? For example, if you say, okay, if attendance is one of those elements, mm -hmm. what kind of things do you think are necessary to stimulate, motivate a young person, whether he is a, a male, female, black or white, um, what kind of things you think are important to make sure that young per person wants to come to school every day? You know, especially... And this is associated with what they would do in work right. once they become an adult. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, the attendance piece is interesting because, uh, you know, and we're addressing... Uh, I think the, the, the basic challenge, uh, uh, the district has been very support supportive, Dr. Lolly has been be very supportive of providing uh, resources like bus passes for those students who have a particular issue. The mm -hmm. caveat is that, you know, you have to perform mm -hmm. <laughs> and you have to uh, right. attend the programming and the different things that we're doing. But, you know, and then they also they're also working on transportation with the RTA for absolutely, the high school absolutely. students again. Right, right. I know that, that was right. another bold move on, mm -hmm. on the it's part very, of, very the, bold of the move. board. Very, okay. very bold yeah. move. Yeah. And that so that that addresses the uh, the basic transportation piece. I mean, right. it's point A to point B. But you know, working with men like me and you, working with the mentors, working with the coaches, working with all these folks. You know, 
what you find out in life, you hear people say often, you know, half the battle is showing up. Yep. And, and getting used to showing up and having that be a part of your process every day. As much as I want to lay in bed and sleep late, I can't because my body says, you got to go to work. You right. know, the, the young people mm -hmm. are looking for you. You can't, you mm -hmm. can't lay here. And it's, it's getting used to some of those basic practices that we know make anyone more successful. Mm -hmm. uh, getting up, coming into work, coming into school. And then the more you do that, the more you study, the more you do right by yourself personally, it, it mm -hmm. catches. Right. So, and, so what? If, so, what if work is fun? Does it seem like work? Uh, yeah. Well, sometimes <laughs> it does. Sometimes it doesn't. And that's and that's yeah. the thing. Sometimes it, it doesn't seem like work. Yep. And then other times it does. And that's when you have to maintain that consistency. Time management is another piece. Yeah. How are you managing your time? Mm -hmm. What are you doing at home in the evening that possibly is holding you back from getting mm -hmm. to school on time in the morning? I talk to students. They stayed up till one, two, three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work. You're not going to want to come into school. Mm -hmm. Also, there's some avoidance. When you don't do your work, when you're not studying, when you're not reading, when you're not prepared, it makes you not also want to get involved and walk into that classroom. Yeah. When you do those things, you feel better and you can't wait to get into the mm -hmm. classroom because mm -hmm. you've got all your work done. I'm ready to go. So it's, it's getting them used to attending and participating and engaging because these things are catching and it's so, cyclical yeah. because the more you do that, the better you feel about yourself, the more your self concept, uh, the more your self concept changes, the more your self esteem rises. And now you're in a position where you're in control and right. you have to be able and, and then you so don't want to so fall that brings, back. So that brings that second A into place. Now that changes your attitude. 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 So now your attitude is, um, is, is, is more positive, if you will. Right, right. In terms of, like you said, you have a better attitude about your, uh, your self-value, your right. self-worth. Right. And you're feeling comfortable in terms of addressing some of those kind of issues. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so then we know then the attitude is good. There you're we there. Go. Here we go. And now. The achievement. What's that? Okay. Yeah, so yeah, in all right. those different areas, it begins to, uh, it, begins to jump it, off. It, and it works. It works. Yeah. And, and just by doing that incrementally, we're going to see a major change mm -hmm. in our young mm -hmm. men and just how they look at school. I, I just read a study that said, you know, negativity changes your brain. Mm -hmm. It changes your gateways. And it, it, you, you are locked into that. So once we can move them out and provide them with uh, substantive opportunities to learn, provide them with fun activities to also learn uh, and also time for some comradeship and some uh, family time mm -hmm. and some brotherhood and some movies and all these different activities help alleviate the stress you have about math class mm -hmm. it, you know or uh, courses that you don't like and then our job will be to support that and make okay. sure that those areas are supported and students begin to do better and become stronger in those different okay. areas. So we're going to ask everyone to join us, certainly, at um, the African American Summit uh, yes, on the 17th of uh, August at the Sinclair Community College Building 12 and uh, free breakfast, free lunch, a lot of great activities. And before we leave, I, I would be remiss if I did not thank those individuals who have been a part of the um, incubation process, Absolutely. if you will, Absolutely. as far as uh, the Males of Color, Men of Color programs. Right. I go back, you know, looking at uh, David Lawrence, look at um, the uh, who was heavily involved in the system in terms Absolutely. of addressing that issue. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Walker, Dr. who was Walker, president right. of the school board, mm -hmm. and current president uh, Reverend Harris, Harris uh, yeah. who's supportive, and Dr. Lolly as well. Right, right. And you got a new supervisor, Dr. Michael Sullivan, Dr. Sullivan who will yes, be sir. seeing a lot of. Absolutely. And right. then, of course, I thank the mayor for uh, engaging us with uh, this whole city of learners piece. Right. And the support that I get from her and the fellow commissioners for um, medical activities as well. So again, uh, time has gone by, of course, as it always does more quickly than we than we uh, <laughs> than we realize. And uh, thank you for watching, and thank you, Mr. It's Rogers, for your participation my and pleasure. for the work that you do with young men. Thank Man. you for your support. Okay, absolutely, uh, not a problem. So you can watch the show www.daytonohio.gov or on uh, YouTube or on the internet. So thank you again. Have a great day.